Hi, you guys. Welcome back for our daily practice questions. As always, you know, I like to first get into my introduction and disclaimer before getting started with our questions for today. So for those of you who are familiar with me, hey, y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I am a family nurse practitioner, and I am the founder and CEO of The Nursing Studio. I provide resources, tools, review courses, review videos, one-on-one -on -one sessions, QBanks, question and analysis sessions, and more to assist nurses as well as nurse practitioners with success on their boards as well as in practice. I've been doing this since 2015, assisting nurses and nurse practitioners internationally with exam success. Now, y'all know I always like to go over my disclaimer and reminder that there are no absolutes in medicine. We know this. And any other questions that you see here, I have designed and created based on the current guidelines that are being tested on the ANCC as well as AAMP exam. Now, any of my videos where I'm teaching on things that we currently do in practice, I will always say that so there's no confusion. So with that being said, let's get into our questions for today. And a few housekeeping really briefly. Um, our practice question course is next week from 10 to 1130 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I do have one availability remaining during this course. I will go through the blueprint and breakdown for each exam, the ANCC as well as AAMP. We will work through live practice questions from each system together. I will show you how to answer each question type and how to take your knowledge and apply it effectively, as well as provide you with test taking tips. You will also receive those practice questions and tips after the end of the course. The antibiotic worksheet as well as the diabetes worksheets are um, still available. They will remain up on the site, but all of these options are linked in the description of this video if you are interested in any. But let's get into question number one. Question number one states, according to the GINA guidelines, what is the primary treatment approach for a patient with stage five asthma? Is it A, a low dose ICS alone, B, high dose ICS combined with the LABA and considering adding on therapies, C, oral corticosteroids as the first line therapy, or D, a low dose ICS plus a LABA PRM? Take a moment and tell me what you got. All right, you know, I always recommend reading the stem of the question first as it allows you to slow down to ensure you're answering what is being asked of you. But here, in this case, the stem is the question, the question is the stem. So according to the GINA guidelines, what is the primary treatment approach for a patient with stage five asthma? So in that highest stage of asthma, the treatment approach is B. You want to do a high dose ICS combined with the LABA. You know, we do our combo inhalants, right? That's the preferred controller and reliever and also consider adding on therapies if warranted, okay? Question number two, when should healthcare providers consider stepping up treatment for a patient with asthma, according to the GINA guidelines? Is it A, when the patient has no symptoms? B, if the patient is using their reliever more than two times a week? C, if the patient is on a high dose ICS already? Or D, when the patient has not used their medication for a month? Take a moment and tell me what you got. All right, so when should a healthcare provider consider stepping up a treatment for a patient with asthma? And the best answer is, what do y'all think? B, if the patient is using their reliever more than twice a week, right? So if, you're, if they're using that reliever more than two times a week, you need to consider stepping up the asthma stepwise approach. And again, you know, I always like to give the reminder, although asthma is a chronic condition, you can step down the stepwise approach too. All right, question number three, what is a key component of an asthma action plan as outlined in the GINA guidelines? Is it A, only medication instructions, B, a list of triggers to avoid, C, a plan for regular follow-ups, or D, instructions for increasing medication during worsening symptoms? Tell me what you got. All right, and so here, what is the key component of an a, a asthma action plan? So y'all, asthma action plan is in the event of an exacerbation, you know, or other altering factors with asthma, having a plan on what they should do, right? But one of those key components is instructions on uh, increasing their medication during worsening symptoms, okay? So D, you want to make sure they know how to do this and what, what steps are in the action plan, um, for their, their best output, okay? Their best outcome, sorry. But I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, as always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with whomever you may think may find this beneficial as well. 
I've been trying to go through the asthma questions for you guys. I did a Gina um, review too, if you haven't seen that video. I posted it on yesterday to give y'all an overview, kind of uh, the breakdown of assessment, diagnosis, evaluation, and treatment. And seeing that chart broken down so that you can understand the um, preferred controller, preferred reliever, and the alternate treatments, because that is the format that they follow these days for the GINA guidelines. And I'm going by the one that they are currently testing you on. So if you struggle with that, check out that video. And I hope that it's helping you to apply these questions. They may seem similar in nature, but if you know these foundational pieces, you'll be able to uh, adjust these questions because because of the combo inhaler, it's less um, changes and variability. So that's why these questions may seem a little bit straightforward, but I hope you found it helpful. And um, as always, if you need any of the things that I do offer, feel free to reach out to the nursing studio by giving us a call at 803-400-6864. You can also shoot a text message to this number or shoot us an email to the nursing studio, the number one at gmail.com. The things that I do offer are my review book. You can get it in an ebook or paperback option, and they're both linked in the bio of this channel. I do offer a self-paced review, so if you're someone who prefers to study independently and have uh, resources that you can listen to and look at repeatedly on the go or when at home, stationary, my self-paced review is also linked in the bio of this channel for Family and Adult Jero. If you need any practice questions to complete, um, my QBank options are also linked in the bio of this channel. And as always, if you're looking to book any one-on-one -on -one sessions with me, question analysis um, sessions, exam readiness assessments, please be sure to reach out by either calling, texting, or email. Because as I always tell you guys, I like to gauge which one you actually need that's going to be best for your success on board. So um, I like to discuss where you are and what your um, goals are and what your study and learning styles are before booking a session. But all right, you guys, y'all know what to do. Y'all make sure y'all meet me back here. Happy studying. Bye, y'all.